friends welcome back to 51st week questions and answers the first one is to improve better understanding of the fog life cycle from 2017-18 wifex 2016-17 was launched by the ministry of earth sciences you may ask what is meant by wifex wifex is winter fog experiment basically it will be operational from the winter of 2017-18 the main purpose is observational campaign to understand clearly the fog life cycle so it will facilitate the reliability of fog prediction then name the company the company is google which announced that all of its data centers across the world will be powered by renewable energy from 2017 onwards a big push for uh, renewable energy from google's perspective and please don't forget google is associated with provision of uh, wifi facility across various railway stations in our country and recently 100th railway station was uh, brought into wifi the 100th railway station is kollam or quillon in kerala please don't forget and at the same time the railway minister suresh prabhakar prabhu stated that in the year 2017 200 more stations will be brought under wifi this year 100 railway stations were brought under wifi and 200 more will be brought under wifi during 2017 and please don't forget google is associated with provision of wifi in railway stations and google stated that all its data centers will consume renewable energy 100% by 2017 then cert in you may ask what is meant by cert cert is computer emergency response team computer emergency response team it is under the ministry of electronics and information technology all of you are familiar with ravi shankar prasad he is the minister for electronics and information technology in addition to law and justice what is the main purpose of cert it is the nodal agency in dealing with cyber security threats like hacking and phishing certain terms don't forget hacking phishing skimming these are very important because nowadays these are the buzzwords because of more push on digital transactions hacking is entering illegally into the systems then skimming skimming is illegally copying the information then phishing phishing is inciting people to reveal their passwords and usernames so these are three words please don't forget and the organization or a nodal authority to deal with all these complaints is computer emergency response team india or cert in these things don't forget look at the micro atms as well as pos terminals micro atms normally works with the fingerprints and pos terminals please look into this picture look at the next one author of the book migrants refugees and the stateless in south asia the book is basically addresses the concept of migration and partha saradhi ghosh is the author of this book name the state government which launched the country's first amphibious bus project here i would like to tell you two three points amphibious bus project was launched by punjab tourism and this bus was not made in our country it was imported from swedish company skenia that is one part and where it was launched by punjab tourism punjab tourism launched this bus this is amphibious bus which can run both on water as well as on land all of you are familiar with the frog frog is named so because of the reason it can live both in water as well as on land so amphibious vehicle means which can run both on water as well as on land and this was imported from sweden and it was introduced by punjab tourism in harike wetlands you may have a doubt where is the harike wetlands harike wetlands are in punjab and they are formed by constructing the dams across the confluence of bias and satlas rivers in 1953 bias is the tributary of satlas don't forget and because of 
dams construction this harike wetlands were formed so if someone talks about harike wetlands these are in punjab don't forget this is with the regard to the new prime minister of new zealand bill english is the new prime minister and john key resigned because of personal reasons dgad recommended imposition of anti dumping duty on imports of steel tubes and pipes from china i have told you several times anti dumping duty as well as countervailing duty along with safeguard duty these are wto compliant when sufficient reason is there governments can impose these duties and if you look at this anti dumping duty as well as countervailing duty these duties are recommended by directorate general of anti dumping and allied duties but imposed by ministry of finance this clarification is very important and directorate general of anti dumping and allied duties is under the ministry of commerce and industry so the answer for this is commerce and industry there are news reports that methane rose rapidly by 10 or more parts per billion annually please don't forget we measure carbon dioxide as parts per million recently carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere reached 400 parts per million this methane is measured as parts per billion here recently it stands at 1830 parts per billion and another important aspect is which is the main contributor for rise in methane levels for rise in methane levels the major contributor is agricultural activity please don't forget and if you look at the greenhouse gases because of human activities carbon dioxide contributes maximum followed by methane followed by nitrous oxide and now the important aspect to note is methane concentration is also increasing and methane is basically due to agricultural activity don't forget here we discussed last week customers making digital payment for purchase of petrol and diesel will get a discount of 0.75% on the sale price of fuel the largest indoor sports complex in india is coming up in kolkata in new city glands i told you about motera stadium which is going to become the largest cricket stadium as far as seating capacity is concerned once the expansion is over at the same time largest indoor sports arena is coming up in kolkata at present the largest indoor stadium in our country is in new delhi that is indira gandhi indoor stadium now in kolkata to accommodate 15400 people 10 acres of land was allocated and this will come up in kolkata please don't forget who among the following was appointed as unicef's global goodwill ambassador if you want more about unicef unicef was basically established to provide emergency food and health care to children in the countries devastated by second world war second world war was ended in 1945 and this unicef was established subsequently probably in 1946 basically to provide emergency food and health care to the children affected by the second world war and now as a global ambassador priyanka chopra was appointed global goodwill ambassador previously she was appointed as unicef's national ambassador and now she will be global goodwill ambassador look into the next one microsoft opened its first full scale cyber security engagement center in new delhi this is the seventh cyber security center in the world for microsoft and it is the first of its kind center in our country don't forget Sitway port built by India is going to be commissioned shortly there is a news report that the Sitway port is going to be commissioned shortly and it is in Myanmar and basically Mizoram will become nearer to Kolkata 
at present the route from Kolkata to Mizoram is through Chicken's Neck, whereas in future the route will be through Bay of Bengal, Sitway Port, Kaladan River. So Mizoram will become nearer through this multi-modal route. And here I would like to tell you one more point. This is a part of Kaladan Multimodal Transit Transport Project. World's longest rail tunnel, we discussed some time back. Recently, it started commercial operations. So this is in Switzerland below the Alps Mountains. And the cost is $12.5 billion. And here, I would like to put forth the world's top three tunnels. This one, Switzerland, Gotthard Base Tunnel or GBT. It is 57 kilometers in Switzerland. Then the second longest is the Seacon Rail Tunnel in Japan, 54 kilometers. Third one is the UK and France Channel Tunnel. This is important. Please don't forget English Channel connects UK as well as France. Sometimes in general studies also, you may be asked this question. English Channel connects UK with France and the tunnel connecting these two countries is the third longest in the world with 50 kilometers. Please don't forget, world's longest tunnel now is in Switzerland, that is the rail tunnel, Gotthard Base Tunnel. Central Zone Bench of National Green Tribunal directed to cancel allotment of salt ponds in Sambhar Salt Lake. And two, three things I would like to tell you about Sambhar Salt Lake. This Sambhar Salt Lake is in Rajasthan, that is one part. And it is India's largest inland salt lake. It is surrounded by Ara Valley Hills. Then another important aspect I would like to tell you. It is designated as a Ramsar site. And please don't forget what is meant by Ramsar Convention. Ramsar Convention is basically the Convention on Wetlands. It is the Intergovernmental Environmental Treaty and it came into force in 1975 and this is Sambhar Salt Lake which is India's largest inland salt lake is one of the Ramsar lakes. So if someone talks about the Ramsar convention, it is convention on wetlands, don't forget. Look into the next one, Intel, Intel and Government of India will provide online river water and air quality monitoring system basically to monitor water pollution as well as air pollution. So, with the Government of India, the organization which is going to be associated to form PPP to conduct research on water and air pollution monitoring is Intel, don't forget. Then Swayam, Government is giving a more push for online education. Recently, Government AICTC, University Grants Commission, gave guidelines that 20% of the classes can be online. And Swayam is the platform for that purpose, launched by Ministry of Human Resources Development. Swayam means study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds. And to develop these online lectures, Government of India tied up with the Microsoft. Right, friends, look at the next one. Name the country which has withdrawn 100 Bolivar note. When you look at the Venezuela, three things I would like to tell you. One is, Venezuela suffered badly because of fall in oil prices, because its economy predominantly depends on oil. Second point, the currency is a Bolivar. It lost its value and recently government withdrawn this 100 Bolivar note just like our rupees 500 as well as rupees 1000 notes but they could not manage the situation and the decision was deferred till January 2017. Third important aspect is if someone asks you which of the following countries is suffering because of hyperinflation the country you should not forget is Venezuela when the inflation goes out of hand. 200%, 300%, 400%. Then the name, hyperinflation, please don't forget. Which of the following city is also UNESCO World Heritage Site and devastated because of civil war? Aleppo. 
Aleppo, old city is a world heritage site. But this was devastated because of crossfire between two forces, one headed by government, the other headed by rebel forces. Right, if someone talks about Aleppo, it is one of the world heritage sites and it is in Syria caught in crossfire and devastated badly. Which of the following was given permission by Reserve Bank of India to raise rupees 3000 crore more through masala bonds? Masala bonds are rupee denominated bonds raised abroad. Currency risk lies with investor, not with borrower. If I am borrowing money, the risk does not lie with me. Whoever is giving me money, the risk lies with him. That is the beauty of uh, rupee denominated bonds. HDFC was previously given. Limit up to rupees 5000 crore. Now another 3000 crores of rupees is allowed for HDFC. Next, the country which is almost on the verge of uh, civil war among ethnic groups is South Sudan. Please don't forget. South Sudan was formed in the year 2011 and here fight is going on between various ethnic groups. President belongs to Dinka group and rebel leader belongs to Nuyer group and both are fighting for supremacy. And in the eyes of United Nations, the country which is going to have worst days is going to be South Sudan in 2017. Then name the state government which launched Annapurna Rasoi scheme. This is Rajasthan. Here breakfast will be at rupees 5 per plate. Lunch or dinner at rupees 8 per plate. It is on the lines of similar canteens run by Tamil Nadu government which is known as Amma canteens or Amma Vunavagam if I am not wrong. VK Sharma appointed as chairman of Life Insurance Corporation of India for a period of 5 years. This is one use. Second important aspect, don't forget if someone asks you what is India's largest financial institution? That is the Life Insurance Corporation of India and its assets are almost 15% of India's GDP. Then post harvest festival of Paddy that is Talfa Wangakot. This is organized in Mizoram. Certain festivals don't forget. I am reiterating you once again. Wangala festival that is celebrated in Meghalaya that is also known as 100 drum festival and it is celebrated by Garo tribes of Meghalaya. At the same time Manipur's Sangai festival and Arunachal Pradesh Losar festival. These are some of the festivals of northeastern part of the country. Please don't forget to look into the last one. Vijay Divas is the day when Bangladesh was liberated that is 16th December. We celebrate it as Vijay Divas. With the help of India, Bangladesh got liberated on 16th December 1971 and recently 45th anniversary of Vijay Divas was celebrated. Right friends, this let us conclude. Questions and answers. Have a nice day. Thank you.